Welcome to the module on building foundational literacy and numeracy outcomes at scale using structured pedagogy. In module one, we will learn about what is the structured pedagogy approach and why is it important. My name is Anustup Naik. I'm a project director at Central Square Foundation. Before we begin, I wanted to briefly introduce the work that Central Square Foundation does in ensuring quality school education in India. Our work is focused on three impact areas. The first is foundational literacy and numeracy. We also focus on early childhood education, technology in education, and school governance. And the way we work has three important elements. The first is that we work very closely with both the central and state governments in achieving student learning outcome goals. The second is that we follow an integrated coalition approach where we collaborate very closely with technical partner organizations which bring expertise to the table. Third, we generate research and evidence on what works in terms of high quality interventions, but also improve the quality of data collected through assessments. Over the last decade, Central Square Foundation has played a very critical role, along with many partner organizations, on the reforms that have led to the New Education Policy 2020 and also the Nippon Bharat Mission, which is India's foundational literacy and numeracy mission. In this module, we will learn what is structured pedagogy. And we will also learn about how to implement structured pedagogy programs at scale. While trying to understand the structured pedagogy approach, we will understand how structured pedagogy improves classroom teaching and learning. We'll also look at research evidence from India and across the world on the impact of structured pedagogy programs. And we are also going to address some of the misconceptions regarding structured pedagogy. While looking at structured pedagogy at scale, we're going to understand the learnings from Central Square Foundation's work in foundational literacy and numeracy in India, especially around the Nippon Bharat mission, where Central Square Foundation supported the Ministry of Education and also several state governments in embedding the structured pedagogy approach inside FLN programs that are running at fairly large scale. Let us understand what children are really learning in India and countries like ours. In fact, as many studies, especially studies like ASAR show that the foundational learning levels in India are very low. By the time children reach grade three or grade four, they are learning outcomes, especially regarding basic concepts in math and language leave much room for improvement. One of the big challenges we face in the learning trajectory of children is that not only children are learning very little to begin with, but their learning also is flattening over time. If you look at the chart in the slides, you'll see that only a very small fraction of learners can keep up with the curriculum. If you look at the graph for the top 90th percentile, you will see that children are beginning to learn uh, fairly quickly. But when you look at the bottom 10th percentile, these children start at grade one and almost by the time they reach grade five, they haven't improved that much. This is a cause for great concern because when children do not have the early reading and math skills, they tend to not get access to further education at the post-primary level and higher secondary level because when they can't read to learn, they cannot learn to read. And this same holds for math as well. Let us understand why the learning levels in children continue to be that low. There are many systemic factors, but one of the key areas where we need to focus on is the prepar preparation that we provide to our teachers. Many teachers come into the classroom without the right skills or the right resources or the coaching that is necessary to provide them the 
the preparedness to teach effectively in the classroom, starting with the pre-service training and throughout their in-service training, most of the teacher training provided in our country is largely theoretical. Many teachers are not able to apply that theory into classroom situations. Many of these programs have unclear outcomes and the content of these training programs have teaching methodologies that are quite outdated and are not in sync with research evidence. And when teachers enter the classroom, they also have very little support from academic coaches who can then guide them through coaching, observation and feedback so that teachers can improve their performance on the job. Studies from classroom observations in India show that the dominant method of classroom discourse is through lecturing. And when children just get fed a whole lot of information, which is largely from the textbook, they tend to learn by rote and therefore miss out on really gathering the concepts and skills that are necessary for good foundational literacy and numeracy. If you look at the kind of work that teachers have to do inside the classroom, it's actually quite complex. Anyone who's taught in a classroom knows how difficult the job of a teacher is. When teachers enter the classroom, they're faced with many decisions. They have to understand the critical outcomes that the children need to achieve. They have to understand how to translate those outcomes into the right methodologies. They have to understand what kind of assessment to provide to children, not to mention a whole lot of issues around classroom management. However, the kind of materials, resources that are provided to teachers largely are focused on a textbook and a few other elements which are not really connected to each other. As a result, teachers are quite confused or have to do a lot of pre-work before they can teach even one lesson. How do we then support teachers to do their job better? And that is where structured pedagogy can really help. Structured pedagogy is an approach that equips teachers with the right tools, the right techniques, and the right training. First, let us look at the right techniques. When teachers are provided with science back techniques such as the concrete pictorial abstract approach in mathematics or the balanced literacy approach in literacy, they are able to provide very effective instruction to children, which is very different from the rote chalk and talk method that, we're, that they were used to. In order to translate this scientific methods into classroom practice, teachers also need the right tools. Therefore, they need a very well-stitched set of tools that link the learning outcomes to teaching plans, to teach, teaching learning materials and assessment. And these kind of tools can really scaffold the teacher as she goes into the classroom. Once they have the right techniques and the right tools, they also need the right training, which is really connected to the materials and also is linked to high quality classroom skills so that they are not only skilled, but are also feeling motivated to deliver well in the classroom. Let us look a little bit deeper into what constitute a tightly knit package of classroom resources, training and academic support for teachers that goes under the structured pedagogy approaches. The first key element of structured pedagogy is classroom resources. And at the center of this is to specify the kind of learning outcomes that students should achieve at the end of not only their grade, but also very specific teaching objectives for teachers that teachers can transact towards on a daily basis. Teachers also need high quality, well-researched and easy to use lesson plans, which can guide them step by step through their instructional process. And these lesson plans need to be linked to the content of textbooks and also need to be linked to practice materials such as workbooks so that children can get some independent practice and develop skills uh, independently 
and can also be assessed using weekly and quarterly assessments. In order to bring learning to life, teachers also need teaching and learning materials, which includes manipulatives and print rich materials. And these link need to be linked to teacher professional development and academic support. Research across the world shows that structured pedagogy programs have been very effective in uplifting student learning at scale. There are several studies that point to the fact that when teachers, especially in low and medium income countries, are equipped with structured pedagogy resources and the program is implemented well, there is a distinct movement of the needle on student learning outcome. A study on 216 programs across 52 low and medium income countries shows a fairly strong movement uh, in student learning outcomes uh, with an effect size of 0.14 for mathematics and 0.23 for literacy, which is quite significant in education. Similarly, there are programs like uh, Tusome and Primer in Kenya and Room to Read in India, which have also showed very strong uh, connection between the good implementation of programs that contain uh, coaching, training, lesson plans, and that are mapped to textbooks and applied in the context of low resource schools. And these programs are showing very, very solid impact on student learning. However, structured pedagogy also has its share of critiques and people who express concerns about the fact that structured pedagogy may equate to spoon feeding for the teacher. However, the actual evidence of practice shows that it is not so. One of the first concern one has heard about structured pedagogy is that structured lesson plans kill the teacher's autonomy. Teachers feel straight jacketed and don't go beyond what is prescribed or scripted in the lesson plans. However, when you go into the classrooms, you realize that when teachers are equipped with the base level of instruction that the structured pedagogy materials and the training programs provide, their cognitive load is reduced and their effort is reduced for lesson preparation time. But more importantly, their mind is also freed up to work closely with students to improve engagement, give personalized attention, and also adapt lesson plans as and when needed. The second critique of structured pedagogy is that repeated practice or what people call as drill and kill can stunt the growth of higher order skills in, in children. When you go into how st good structured pedagogy programs are designed, one would realize that most good structured pedagogy programs actually build conceptual understanding and fluency in the basic skills and then children are more able to get higher order thinking skills like comprehension or problem solving or meaning making, which are very, very important uh, in later life and in the workplace. Finally, another criticism of structured pedagogy is that it is too teacher centric and does not provide children independent opportunity. Most structured pedagogy programs actually focus on the gradual release of responsibility from the teacher to the student. In, in simple words, it starts with I do by the teacher, then we do with the teacher and the student, and then you do by the children. And that ensures that students gradually win off the scaffolding provided by the teacher and can work on their own. And when needed, the teacher can intervene uh, when children are struggling. In summary, what we have learned so far is that the workflow of teachers is quite complex. However, teachers miss the support in terms of training materials and techniques which are needed to ensure that they are able to deliver well in the classroom every day. That's where structured pedagogy comes in with a tightly knit package of teacher training, ongoing support and the right classroom resources. Structured pedagogy equips teachers with very 
well-designed scientific techniques so that they can teach effectively. It scaffolds them with the right tools and also ensures that they are supported with the right training and coaching. Research shows that structured pedagogy has very, very robust impact on student learning outcomes across the world. In spite of the criticism that structured pedagogy may limit teacher autonomy or stunt higher order thinking skills, the reality is that in most classrooms where structured pedagogy programs are implemented well, teachers are really saving their time. They are going beyond the basics and able to raise the needle on student learning while being able to make necessary adaptations as they require. Let's come to the second part of this module, which is how does structured pedagogy programs look like in practice? And that's where the work of Central Square Foundation in India comes in, where we have supported the Nipun Bharat mission, which is India's foundational literacy and numeracy mission. And structured pedagogy is an important element of it. India has been very lucky to have prioritized foundational learning through the new education policy and also then followed it up with a robust national mission for foundational literacy and numeracy called the Nippon Bharat Mission. Nippon is an acronym for National Initiative for Proficiency in Reading with Understanding and Numeracy. In order to make foundational literacy and numeracy the highest priority in the country, we have also been very lucky to receive the support from political and administrative leadership at both central and state levels. The Honorable Prime Minister has highlighted the importance of oral reading fluency and Honorable President of India has spoken on the need for strengthened foundational learning. States across India have also launched their own foundational literacy and numeracy missions, ensuring that the last mile of this mission is strengthened. And this is an unprecedented movement because India has not seen this much focus on early learning. Structured pedagogy approach is a very important element of the design of the Nippon Bharat mission. CSF, Central Square Foundation, supports 11 out of 29 states in India in the implementation of the Nippon Bharat mission. In the four critical pillars where we work, which includes goal setting and system capacity building and governance and data, structured pedagogy is a very important component of the mission design. And embedding these principles and ensuring that these principles are translated into operating materials, resources, and models on the ground has been a very big part of our learning uh, over the last few years. In order to understand how structured pedagogy has been embedded into the design of the Nippon Bharat mission, let us look at the context of Uttar Pradesh, which is India's largest state, where CSF, along with two technical partners, Language and Learning Foundation and Vikram Shila Education Resource Society has partnered with the UP state government, which is leading the mission to create an entire structured pedagogy program for the state. Over the last several years, these partners along with academic leaders from the state have sat together and designed a very well-knit program. The state has decided very specific learning outcomes and goals for the children at the end of every grade level, at the end of grade one, grade two, and grade three, these learning outcome goals are defined. Not only are these goals defined at a grade level, but they are also translated into daily teaching and learning objectives. The state has created a very well-designed teacher handbook or a teacher guide, which has daily lesson plans, which provide step-by-step -step instructions on how to teach numeracy and literacy using an evidence-backed method. And these lesson plans are also very easy to use and are very well connected to the textbooks and also to materials for the child, such as daily worksheets, where children do daily practice on critical skills, 
teaching learning materials like print rich materials for literacy, manipulatives for numeracy, which ensure that there is a lot of hands on exploratory learning. And there is also a focus on formative assessments, where at the end of a learning module, weekly and quarterly assessments are linked to the achievement of the learning outcomes being taught and teachers are able to identify struggling learners and remediate them. Another very important element of the mission design in Uttar Pradesh is providing the right training. One of the significant innovations that has come in in the training is the introduction of very strong linkage to the curricular materials where teachers are actually using the materials they would deliver in the classroom in their training. They're also doing a lot of demonstrations during the training. So they're actually practicing the skills that they would use in the classroom. So training for teachers is no more a boring lecture or a PowerPoint presentations, but constitutes very active learning. Once teachers are in the classroom, teachers are also supported by small bite sized videos, three to five minute videos, which ensure that teachers get a visual demonstration of key teaching techniques so that they can bring it to life in their classrooms. Another very, very important element of implementing the structured pedagogy program in UP is the right mentoring design which includes leveraging the right protocols for teacher mentors, starting with how to conduct class uh, observations where teachers are observed uh, during the teaching process. Then the coach goes into the classroom, conducts a small spot assessment where they pick out three to five children, understand their learning levels through a quick assessment. Then they sit with the teacher to provide constructive feedback on what the teacher has done well and what they could do to improve. And then they're able to record this feedback and observations in an app and then use that data through joint reviews with headmasters. In order to enable the academic resource personnel to do their job well, three or four critical toolkits have been designed. One of them is the right mentoring protocol. You can think of it like a coaching plan where the coach has very specific action items which are explained well and their time in the school is well broken out. Then the mentor app has a very clear classroom observation protocol that is linked to specific steps in the lesson plan and the classroom observation data is fed back into review meetings where mentors understand the kind of support that is needed at a cluster, at a block, at a district level so the right interventions can be made at a system uh, level. Then there is a lot of motivation and rewards and recognition provided to teachers and to mentors throughout all kinds of communication channels, including WhatsApp. So there is a lot of energy in the system around the implementation of this program. While tools, techniques and training are very, very important, one of the things we have learned is that the successful adoption of structured pedagogy program is quite reliant on how different elements come together in the implementation as a whole. So does the state uh, set the right goals. Are those goals communicated really well? Those, those goals linked to the structured pedagogy program in terms of the right learning outcomes and is the structured pedagogy program supported with the right training and capacity building for teachers and academic mentors and is there enough review and accountability built into the system through the use of data? We have learned that when you integrate these four pillars and make them function a little bit with less friction, that's when you get a better implementation at scale for structured pedagogy. To summarize what we have learned is that India has been very fortunate to have this strong focus on foundational literacy and numeracy, which has been brought to life through the national mission uh, called the Nippon Bharat mission. Central Square Foundation and its ecosystem partners have been supporting 11 out of 29 states on the Nippon Bharat mission using a four pillar approach that includes goal setting, structured pedagogy, system capacity building, and also governance and data. 
what we have understood is that the, the tight coupling between teaching learning materials, training, coaching, and use of data in the system is quite critical to the accomplishment of mission goals. So in summary, we have learned a lot in these two modules. So let's see what we have learned. First, we have learned about structured pedagogy. In terms of defining the core components of structured pedagogy, we've also understood how structured pedagogy improves upon traditional teaching practices and improves the quality of learning in the classroom. We've also seen that structured pedagogy programs show impact across a different context in low and medium income countries. We've also helped clarify certain misconceptions and concerns about structured pedagogy. And finally, we have looked at the Nipun Bharat mission and the work of Central Square Foundation, which is working on implementing structured pedagogy programs at scale. And what we have learned is that the structured pedagogy programs need to be supported very strongly with goal setting, capacity building, and with the right data and governance mechanisms for them to be successful. 